Bixby routines can make your smartphone even smarter. By automatically automating simple or complex tasks based on things like your location, time of day, battery level, and more. In part one of this series, I'll review the essential parts of Bixby routines. I'll show you some practical uses, and I'll share some tips to using them that I haven't seen in any other video on YouTube. And we're starting right now. Hi, I'm Orman Beckles, AKA the High Tech Nomad, and welcome to another video. On this channel, you'll find easy to understand videos covering the basics, as well as tips and tricks on cell phones, computers, smart home devices, social media, apps, hardware, and more. So if you wanna learn how to make technology work for you, start now by clicking the subscribe button and be sure to click the bell icon so you don't miss a video. Many routines have to do with location. How do you add locations to Bixby? You're gonna go into menu, go into settings, click where it says Samsung accounts, click on your account. You'll see a bunch of different choices. The one that we're interested in is places. Go ahead and click on places. You can add a new place. It has some built-in ones like home and work, but you can add anything else. You may need to run a certain program at a certain time at a certain place. For me, I sometimes work with different nightclubs and when I'm there at that time and I open my phone, I'm probably checking to see if somebody's on the VIP list. I need to open a program called Table List Pro. I only need to do that at a certain time when I'm at the club. I'm gonna to go to Add Routine and the if is gonna be when I'm at a specific location. I'm gonna go ahead and pick place, and I'm gonna just pick home for right now, even though that's not the right one. We're gonna say home, and we'll click done. Okay, I have to be there, all right. Now, the next thing is, is that I need it only to happen at a specific time. I only really want it between 10 p.m and 12.30. Now we have that it will start from 10 p.m. I have to be at that location. It has to be between that time period. And I only wanted to do it when I open up the phone because usually during that time, I'm not using the phone for anything else. If I open the phone, that's because I'm gonna go check this program. So we'll go ahead and we'll add another condition and that is me opening the phone. So in this case, folding status, and I'm gonna say completely open. Now it says, if I'm at this, oops, let's go ahead and change, uh, it's only Friday and Saturday. I'm gonna click Friday and Saturday. Now it says, if I'm at this location between this time and this time, and I completely open my phone, what do I wanna have happen? I'll click on the then. And in this case, I wanna open an application. I'm gonna click on apps and it says open an app or do an app action. We're gonna go to open an app. And in this case, it's, table list and we have table list pro and next and now it asks me what I want to call it and I'll just call it VIP list and we'll make it blue and we'll put a little do we have a diamond I think we have a little oh we'll put the we'll put the martini glass again when I'm at this place, between this time and this time, and I completely open my phone, then go ahead and open this app. I'll just take my phone out of my pocket, I'll open it up, and boom, we'll have Table List Pro. This one is fairly simple, and that has to do with the orientation of the phone. I have, I have a Z Fold 3, and so many, many times I have it facing one way, but I'll put it down and it's facing the other way. And so it's constantly changing orientation and it actually drives me nuts. Then when I open it, I may turn it up on its side or, or what have you. To make that stop doing that, we're gonna create a routine that only turns on auto rotation when I open the phone. I'm giving you an example to spur you on. You might say something like, look, when I'm in bed at night, uh, I don't want the phone going into auto rotation, or if I'm at work, I don't want it to go into auto rotation, etc. To do that, we're gonna go if, and in my case, I'm, it has to do with whether the phone is closed or not, so I'm going to go 
to folding status, I'm going to say that it's completely closed. When it is completely closed, then I want it to put the screen mode into portrait mode. And you can see I also have a, uh, the opportunity of adding a couple other strange things here in, ter in terms. You'll also see I have the ability to actually force it to be, you know, landscaped or locked or what have you when I'm doing it. But in this case, I just wanted to be in portrait mode when I have the screen closed. I'm going to go ahead and say that. Now, when this routine ends, meaning when I open the phone, what do I want it to do? Now, by default, they have what they call reverse actions, which means if you put it in portrait mode and it was in auto mode, then put it back in that mode afterwards. I'm going to go in and click on that. And you'll see, I'm going to say for auto rotation, screen orientation, I want that to go back on when I'm through. When I close the phone, it'll be locked in portrait mode. However, when I open the phone, it will turn in any direction that I need. This next one has saved me on multiple occasions. See, I know that my phone has the ability to save power. And when I put it into power saving mode, I can get a lot more out of it. The problem is, is that I don't put it into power saving mode when I should. I either wait too long and then the next thing I know the phone is dead, or I don't want to put it in power saving mode because I'm too lazy to take it back out of power saving mode when I'm done. Let's have Bixby do that for us. So we're going to go to add a routine and we're going to go through and we're going to say battery level. And I'm going to say when the battery level is below, and I'm going to say 6%. That means obviously 5%, it'll kick on. I'll say when the battery level is below 6% and I'm not charging. That's the important one for me. And I'm not charging. So wired, 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 not charging. Then go into power saving mode. If I'm, there we go here, power saving mode on. If I'm at 5% and I'm not charging the phone, I won't pull my phone out of my pocket and find out that I've got a dead phone. It will go into power saving mode. Now, if my phone goes below 5%, I won't pull my phone out of my pocket and find out that I have a dead phone. The other thing that this does is, again, it has that reverse action, which means once either one of these conditions, or in this case, both of these conditions are no longer uh, present, it will take it out of power saving mode. I said if you stayed until the end of the video, not that we're anywhere near the end, that I would show you something that I haven't seen in any other video. And that is that we can extend these ifs and these thens. And we're gonna do that with a program called GoodLock. Now GoodLock lets you add all of these features. I'll put a link to the video that we did on GoodLock before they keep adding to it. You can load that separately. And at the bottom of GoodLock, you will find one that says Routines Plus. If you go ahead and click on that, and then load it, what this is going to do is add to the ifs and the thens, and they give us some pretty incredible ifs and thens. And there's one specifically that is just out of this world, and that's what we're gonna take a look at as soon as it loads. So it's already gone ahead and load. So we'll go back to Bixby Routines. I don't think I have to refresh it, we'll try it. We'll see what happens. Now when I go into the ifs, See, under the ifs now, we have routines plus, and we have three extra actions. We have, you unlock with a fingerprint, you push a button, or you do something with an S Pen because this is an S Pen compatible phone. So you could have something like, if I'm at such and such a place, and I unlock with, because you can have more than one fingerprint, let's say your thumb. So if I do this, if I'm here and here and here, and I unlock with my thumb, then I want you to do this. So there's some pretty powerful ifs there. Let's take a look at the thens, and we have all these thens, and you'll see now one that says Routines Plus. If you go ahead and click on that, you have something that says Touch Macro, Arrow Keys, Read Text Aloud. Now, the Read Text Aloud is pretty cool, but it, you can make it say something like, uh, don't forget to do this, so you can actually make your phone talk to you under certain conditions. The one that's super cool that gets overlooked is this Touch Macro. And what the touch macro was going to do is it's going to record how you touch the screen and then allow you to play that back. All right, I'm gonna give you a very practical application of that right now. 
I have a Nissan Rogue, and in my Nissan Rogue, if I go into the app, I have the ability to lock my car door, unlock my car door, and start the car. Now, to lock the car, by the way, as you can see, I have a little icon over here, unlock. I have one over here that says lock. I would click on that. It says, do you want to remotely lock your car? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And it's going to go off and do that. Sometimes I take a nap. Your and car I, doors are now locked. And I forget to lock the car. Let's create a Bixby routine that will lock the car for me. We're going to try and create a routine to lock the car doors. We're going to set it to manual so that we can test it. Go to our touch macro and here it says add and we're going to click on add and it says which app do you want me to open and we'll say Nissan and now it's ready and we're going to say record and now it's going to record what we do. This is where you're going to probably have some issues which is programs don't always open at the same speed if you say after three seconds click this button and it takes four seconds for it to open then it's not going to work i always give it extra time while i'm talking to you now what i'm really doing is giving some extra time for the app to open in case there is some bizarro issue where there's something running in the background and it takes a long time for it to open now you may think that this is an extraordinary long amount of time, but I want to make absolutely sure that the, the app is open and it's ready to receive my next command. I don't care if I have to, because again, this is all going to happen automatically, so I don't necessarily care. But I think we've waited a sufficiently long enough time for the app to be open and be on this screen. The next thing that we want to do is click the lock button and we will wait a few seconds. Again, we're, maybe it has to do some processing in the background. Again, it's gonna all be done automatically. I, I'm not really worried. I will wait uh, a few seconds to make absolutely sure that is open. And now I will click yes. And again, it may take two seconds one time, might take three seconds another time, and it might take one second. But it's better if I wait at least the amount of time. Your car doors are now locked. So as you can see, that took a few seconds, and now I'm gonna give it some more time. Again, the more time you build into this, the more likely that this will work for you perfectly every time. If you cut it too close, it will not work. Now, I want to make sure that this app is gone after I do all this. I'm going to click on the button for that, and I could try and find which one it is, but in this case, it's probably better if I click the close all button, which I've now done. That means it'll be closed. I'll now hit stop. I'll hit save. And now it says, okay, what do you want to call that? And we're going to call that lock the car doors. All right. And then we'll go back into Bixby routines and we should see that. And again, the reason it's closed is because we said closed all. Now we're going to say add routine manually and we're going to go to routines plus touch macro and here it is here lock the car doors that's the one we want it to run we hit next it asks us what do we want to call it we'll say let's see test test touch macro t-e-s-t -E test touch macro we're going to leave it at the green we'll say done we won't bother adding it to the screen now we can go ahead and try and run it it's opening up the app and again we've given it more hopefully more than sufficient time to get the app open and see look at that it already was we, we missed it it already tried to click on the button before the app was open and this is what I'm talking about it does this sometimes and of course now at this point this is uh, totally useless because now it's all a kilter we're gonna go back in and make a couple of changes of course in a second it's going to do the close all we'll need to let this run out before we can go back in and edit it but that's a perfect example of where we timed everything we gave it extra time and it still messed us over <laughs> want to go in and check this out again we're still waiting i see that little icon on the screen that's it saying that it's 
was still hitting the yes. And there it goes. And it should do the close button. And we're done. All right. Let's go back in. Let's go back in to Bixby Routines and edit that routine. And that's why I like to do these in real time because I show you something and then it doesn't work at home. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to click on the touch macro. I'm going to click on the macro itself. I'm going to click on edit and see where it says delay time with uh, 6,000 milliseconds, which is about six seconds. I'm going to set it to the maximum, which is 10 seconds or the maximum is 9,999 milliseconds. So that's 10 seconds. We'll go ahead, we'll hit save, we'll hit done, we'll hit next, we'll keep it at that, and now let's run that again. It's opening up the app. And now we've given it enough time for the app to open. You can see it's still really close, but it, we were able to catch it. It's now on that in-between second, that in-between time where it's waiting to click the yes button probably could have cut that a little sooner but like i said it's going to be in your pocket or whatever it's gone off and run that beautiful everything's working fine in a few seconds it come back it should tell us that the cars will, the car doors are locked your car doors are now locked beautiful now we have to wait a few seconds again if it your car out. doors are now locked if we had it in our pocket it wouldn't make a big deal in a few seconds, you should go to that option button. And there we go. I'm glad that you saw that. I'm glad that it messed up so that you now know how to fix it. You now have enough information to experiment on your own. In the comments below, let me know what routines you come up with. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button. In the next installment in this series, I'll show you how to use Bixby with Samsung's SmartThing, as well as with your Amazon Echo. If you'd like to see this video before it's released to the general public, become a channel member. In addition to getting early access, you'll be able to view exclusive videos not available outside of the members only area, and you'll be helping to keep this channel going at the same time. We really need to get this channel to 25,000 users, so please click the subscribe button and help keep us going. Until the next time, this is Ormond Beckles, aka the High Tech Nomad signing out.